we'll have a few uh, opening remarks and then we'll uh, get your questions. Remember to raise your hand and we'll get one of the remote mics to you. And a reminder, no live streaming. All right. Thanks, Claude. Um, we started on our off week uh, prep, uh, bye week prep uh, today. I thought the guys had good energy. Uh, we didn't have a, a great practice, but we had good energy, and that was uh, important. Um, we're really working hard on uh, conditioning and connection, um, trying to get some guys healthy and well, uh, but also get some good work in. Our offensive and defensive coaches have uh, targeted some areas, uh, each one different areas. Some I can share, some I can't, that we want to work on to get better at, and then uh, special teams. Uh, as well. So we, we kind of take a, a picture of where we are, um, what we can do better, and how we can practice it better to maybe get better results. Um, and that's what we started on today. We do work on future opponents. So we worked on some, a team that's further out today and then a little less further out tomorrow. And then uh, we'll start on uh, Florida prep probably Wednesday or Thursday, tomorrow or Thursday. So that I'll open it up. Coach, uh, how far along was, was Lawson? I know he's played in the last couple of games, and you mentioned him briefly in the post game. Where is Lawson lucky at come in his comeback? And um, can you fast track a guy like that? Is that a good term, or is that not good? You don't fast track a, 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 an injury, really any injury. You, 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 you do what the medical staff tells you and what the body tells you. Um, Lawson's done a fabulous job uh, rehabbing from his. And, um, and you know, Lawson's a really tough kid. He's, both parents were college athletes. He's not afraid of work, um, and uh, he's done a great job. So I, I still don't think Lawson's 100%, that's what you're asking, but he is uh, definitely, he's been cleared to play. I mean, technically since Auburn, he's been cleared to play, uh, but you know, he just hadn't quite been ready to play. Yeah, Coach, going back to Washington, it seemed like the playing service might have been an issue, guys slipping multiple injuries. I'm just curious your thoughts on the playing service that yeah, I don't, I don't get much into that. I hadn't read that anywhere, seen that anywhere. I mean, I, I, we, we had guys slip, sure. We have guys slip every time we play on turf. I actually, there was a game, uh, I can't remember who Kentucky was playing, but I counted like 15 times people slipped in one of the Kentucky games before we played them. And I thought, well, what? that was Kentucky at home. Um, I think just traditionally, uh, you know, a lot of our college teams don't, don't practice or play much on turf. And when they do, uh, they, they traditionally have, um, they slip more. We did a big uh, surface study uh, last year that we're looking into to, to get our indoor um, better up to date because ours is, I think, on year nine or 10, and um, maybe eight or nine, and we're, we're, we're looking at this monofilament like that more of the NFL teams are going to. That's actually what uh, Vandy has, I think, so it's, it's very standard. Coach, a lot has happened with uh, Brock since we last talked to you up in Nashville. Just wondering if you can kind of uh, be specific with us on what he's dealing with. If, if, if was it in fact the type of surgery? And then, obviously, you're talking about a guy like him with you know unlimited NFL potential. How are you weighing that against trying to come back and, and win a championship? Yeah, I don't think it's it's much about any of that as it is. The more I've learned, and you know, I've slowly become a, a bigger expert on this type of surgery, because not because of Brock, because we've had multiple other guys, and so have other teams. You know, I've talked to Hugh Freeze, Shane, uh, uh, several of the guys. You know, in, in our conference have dealt with this injury. It's, it's much more common. It's all over the NFL, so it's it's happening at a, a higher rate, I guess you would say. And um, a lot of studies have been done on it. And philosophically, to get healthy. You need to, you know, get back moving that ankle um, as soon as you can. Meaning, get on it, get weight bearing, move around. And we've had guys going through this process. Uh, so, you know, Brock will take on that same rehab process, and uh, his surgeon and, and, and Ron will work together on that. And it won't be done any different. The the key is that we are trying to get him back healthy. There is no timeline for when he comes back to play. The timeline is just when he's healthy. And I don't think you could put a timeline on it because historically there's been guys that came back really fast and there's been guys that come back really slow. Each one's been different. Can we give an update on uh, Xavier Trust? Was, was his a high ankle sprint also? And 
What is the availability um, for him with Florida and Emeritus Mims as well? Yeah, don't know. Uh, Trust did not practice today, um, but Trust was weight bearing. You know, second half of the game, he was on the sideline and over there, and uh, his um, deltoid um, was a little bit hurt, but it's not tightrope or anything like that. We, we think he should be fine and uh, should be good to go. I don't know if he'll be good to go by Thursday, but should be good to go by Monday. Um, and Mims is uh, working his way back. He's weight bearing. He's running. He's moving around. I thought. I thought he looked uh, much better yesterday when we did uh, some stretch and stride stuff. He's been out there at practice, but you know, hadn't taken any reps. But um, it's going to be a, a timetable on him for the same as you know everybody else with those injuries when they're when they're cleared and they're comfortable and they can uh, play at a winning rate. They'll they'll get a chance to go back out there. Uh, with Brock being out, who are you really looking at to step up and fill that hole on the offense? Yeah, I, I talked to the team about you know coach football 25 years and every year you have different challenges and this year is no different than any other year the challenges are only different and so one of our big key DNA traits is resiliency so this team has been extremely resilient I 100% confidence they'll be resilient and you know if, if, if they think that one guy's gonna replace Brock Bowers they're wrong and if anybody thinks they got to be Superman they don't need to be on our team because they'll be disappointed Superman is not real He's, he's dead, he's not alive. So like, he's not real. So you can't, you can't try to be that guy. So there's no player that we're asking to step up and do more than you can. We're, and as a collective effort, every player's gonna do more. That includes defense, getting turnover, special teams, getting better field position. Uh, you know, other guys' opportunities to touch the ball and make the most of it. Was Kendall able to go today? Just what's the latest on that? Um, he he did some stuff. He was able to go out there and practice. I, I, I don't. I, I feel good about Kendall. It was not a high rep day for him, no. But um, I, he was out there. I'm pretty sure he went out there. I, mean, I think he did. Hey, Kirby. Have you spoken with Brock after surgery and just like mentally and emotionally? How's he doing? I'm sure this is a, a tough thing for him to be going through. Brock Bowers is great. Brock Bowers is, is rock solid. He wanted to get the thing done as soon as he found out it had to be done. And uh, we were able to expedite that process. And uh, he's great. He's looking everybody in the eye today and, and wishing he could be out there. So he's in great spirits. He's got great family. He's got great heart. I mean, he's, he's a warrior. So he'll, he'll, he'll handle it the right way. Hey, yeah, Coach, you had a chance to evaluate him. Just curious how you thought Monroe Freeman you know, responded to having the Cooper in action. Yeah, you get thrown in there, and uh, it's great because about three weeks ago I called him and I told him, I said, Monroe, you realize you're one play away, and every rep you take in practice, you should be imagining that you're you know, road game in there on the stadium and ready to go. And sure enough, it happened. And uh, yeah, I thought he did a good job. There's a lot of things he could work on, but you know, there's butterflies in there. Fortunately, he had gotten to play in some games, but not in that situation. So I was thrilled that he got to go out there and uh, get some confidence and go play. He's a really good athlete um, and he's a worker, so he'll he'll work really hard to get better. Coach, you've obviously spoken with a lot of admiration for Brock, not just the player, but the person. So for you as not the coach, but the person to see him have to deal with this, what is that like for you? Well, I mean, it's hard only to, for Marius Mims. You know, it's hard on me for Lawson Lucky. It's hard on me for Branson Robinson. So I, I don't, and I don't mean that any negative way towards Brock, but there's a lot of guys on our team that have been dinged up and hurt. I mean, Tyron Dawkins hadn't been able to go the entire year. I mean, he went one game, I guess, and, and then we had to shut him down. So like, Brock's aware that other guys have to deal with this too. And we have, I mean, one time, I think seven or eight starters that had been out. And um, I have empathy for all of them, not one more than the other, you know, I don't, I don't look at Brock's as more significant because he's a greater uh, player asset. They all have value. We got we got walk on kids that are having to have surgery, so um, it's tough anytime a player loses um, practice time and play time. I know earlier you said there's there's no Superman, especially when it comes to replacing a guy like Brock. But with you know Oscar Delp stepping into a bigger role, what are you telling him? What have you seen from him as he gets sort of prepared to do that? Obviously, knowing that he shouldn't feel the pressure to try and beat Brock. Yeah, he's not in a bigger role. He's in the same role he was in, which is to help our team. I, I, won't, I, don't, I don't believe that for one second. He's in a bigger role. Um, you know, the plays that you design, guys, I think y'all think of them as Brock plays. There, there are a lot of positions that can be in those spots. 
Yelp could be in those spots. Dom could be in those spots. Dylan Bell could be in those spots. Marcus Rosenby could be in those spots. Our offense is not built around like one person doing one thing. It's built around plug in and you can do it in 10 personnel. You can do it in 11 personnel. You can do it in 13 personnel. And I think every offense that's a good offense is that way. Because if you limit yourself to just one player, then I mean, we, we've had we've had scenarios and, and catastrophe plans that are like, what if this happens in a game? What is our answer? We went immediately to that answer and said, these are the things we have to do. So uh, I'm not I'm not going that route on the Oscar Dell thing because Oscar Dell's got to do what he's always done: is play as hard as he can and, and play winning football. Coach, so two parter for you. One um, after the game, you mentioned how. Coach Bobo needs guys available to work him into the scheme. How, how is Lad doing on the, on the comeback? He's an explosive player. And then two, just initial thoughts on Florida. I know you haven't dove into that game plan. Yeah, I can't give you comments on Florida. I just I had I mean, I've been able to watch a couple games, and I've watched other teams, and I'll watch more as the week goes. Um, as far as Lad, he, he he did well today. He practiced today, and um, probably did more today than what he's done on the Tuesdays in the past. But he also had Monday. Sunday off, you know, so uh, feel good about where he's at, but also it's day to day. Yeah, because I believe in your opening statement, you mentioned some objectives for both offense and defense that you would, and, you know, reveal. What are some of those things you want to see this team be better at? Well, the obvious, you know, the areas that we can improve in defensively, red areas, a key area, and forcing more turnovers is a huge area. Uh, you know, offensively, the ability to run the ball, be explosive running the ball. Uh, we want to continue to do that and improve it in the red area where we've been. We've had games that we were elite offensively in the red area, then we've had games where we were forced to kick field goals, and it usually came by way of losing first and second down, uh, not really third down. So those are areas that we can get better at. And special teams is kind of one by one. There's some things we can do better. Yeah, so a little bit, <clears throat> a little bit the same question I had, but as far as red zone defense specifically, I guess what are some of the issues you're seeing in, in that area of the field that's maybe keeping off from as much success as y'all had in years past? You know, uh, it's hard to pinpoint because every game has been a different person or a different thing. There is no common theme. There's no like, well, they're throwing it over our head. Well, this guy's a weakness and he's getting beat. You know, everybody's taking turns. You know, this guy got beat, he had bad eyes. This guy had great leverage, he got beat. This guy gave up a run in his gap. He didn't run the right stunt. Um, and then sometimes they just whip you. You know, they just, they, 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 they whip you. South Carolina ran it in on us. And you know, we, we say at Georgia, you, you aren't, we're not going to let you run it in. Well, some teams have. Coach, Yeah, after getting a chance to review the tape and seeing him now start seven games, what is your impression of Carson Beck now? He's grown to this point in the season. Yeah, uh, he plays uh, very uh, consistent uh, winning football uh, when he plays within the system. Um, I think sometimes when he tries to do too much, he gets himself in trouble. But he's played uh, a really high level to me, you know, uh, like a 90% success rate. And keeping the 10% from being catastrophic is critical. Because uh, that's that's the ones you want to get back. And then, uh, if he can take those ten percent and throw them away, and then keep his ninety percent and his accuracy, you know, he's, we're going to be good offensively when he's good. Kirby, we've uh, seen Makai have a few muff punts at this point. Does anything need to change on that front, or is it just a matter of decision making and you know, going through that process for him? You ever call one? No. You ever call a rugby left footed in the wind? Nope. I have. I'm glad I'm not back there. And I'm glad Muse is. So I trust him and I think I got a lot of confidence in him. But until you've gone back there and seen Tim Wakefield's knuckleball do this through the wind, because the other option is don't catch it. I don't think that's a good option either, because the ball rolls. So check college football right now to see how many drops and fumble punts there are. They're not your traditional kickoff, and they're not your traditional spirals. Uh, they're really hard to catch and I'm proud of what he's doing. Well, you talked to Smile after the game. Can you comment on his performance this point in the season? And one thing Smile told us was there were some communication breakdowns that, that are pretty uncharacteristic for your defenses. Can you comment on those two things? Well, I don't know what he's referring to. Um, yeah, when you say communication breakdowns, I don't, you know, we, had to, we, had to, we didn't have a bust in coverage. We just had a, a, a rule that two guys were on the same page. I wouldn't call it a bust. Um, but uh, Smile's been a good leader. Um, Smile's 
closer to 100%. I think he, he played early in the uh, camp on, a, on an injury that you know a lot of people take a long time to come back from. I think he made it back in four months and was able to go play early in the season. And he, he was like, the early season was like his camp. He didn't get a camp to go through. And uh, he's, he's back up to speed and uh, doing a good job. And I think he's really wanting to have a good back half of the season and play more physical and play faster. So counting on him to do that. Kirby, you guys have gone without impactful offensive players the last couple of seasons uh, due to injury. Is that something you guys can lean on in terms of knowing that um, you know, Bowers is different, obviously, but is there anything instructive about that? I don't know. I don't know that I would agree with that statement. Um, we've always had somebody that was impactful. I think you may be referencing George or, or some of those guys, but we've always had other guys that were impactful, and, and I still think we have impactful players on our offense now. So. Um, We've got good football players, and our guys are excited for the opportunity. Uh, our, we got good coaches that will find ways to be good players in football. Kirby, how confident would you say you are that Brock will be back in a Georgia uniform this, at some point this season? <laughs> you really think I'm going to answer the question? I mean, like, is that all this this is about? Like, you guys, all y'all want to talk about is whether he's going to be back or not. That's not – like, that is the furthest thing from my concern. My concern is this team – and getting Brock Bowers healthy. And this team, and getting Brock Bowers healthy, like, to answer that question is speculative. I'm not going to speculate. Coach, you've been pretty good in two minutes the last couple of weeks right before the half. What's been the key to you guys you know, being successful in those critical moments? Of the game? Getting the ball back um, for the offense to let them go two minutes. Uh, they have been good. We've historically been good here. The middle eight numbers have been really good for us. And uh, this year is probably our worst year, middle eight, but it was good Saturday. Um, and it's the difference in the game. So, I mean, getting the ball back is the biggest thing to get them going and get them started. Good time. Two more questions. You know, I'm sure you do your best to ignore it, but there's been a lot of doubt cast on George's way of losing a player like Brock. Is that maybe something you guys can use as fuel to sort of, you know, say, hey, we're more than just one great player on this team? I don't know. You said it. I mean, I don't, I don't think we need that to, 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 to have the motivation or, or, I mean, the motivation is to be great. Um, you know, I don't know if it, it creates that edge or, or what, but um, I'm just – Focused on what we're going to do tomorrow. Coach, it's always hit or miss when that bye week falls. I mean, you kind of laid out the plan for the same <coughs> the players, obviously, kind of a different <coughs> team. What's kind of the focus you want them to have kind of the back half of the week going into next week? The back half of the week will be about Florida. The front half of the week will be about us. Um, and the focus is on us and how we can get better. Thanks. Thank you.